We have any additions to the agenda, so I would move we approve the agenda as printed. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second for approval of the agenda. Any other discussion or question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of August 27th, also payroll of $297,073.42, a wire payment for utilities of $8,278.78. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second it. We have the motion, the second for approval of the consent agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Craig? Commission comments. Yeah, uh, last uh, Thursday, Janelle and I, uh, North Central Regional Planning Commission out of Beloit, we met my Zoom. Uh, I'd say the, the main topic was the legislators, I think there was only three of them there. Uh, Randall Harding was there, and he was at there. Uh, <clears throat> COVID-19 took a lot of the time up, uh, more than it should have. Right, Janelle? Correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, ask further questions then, and then I, uh, home rule, Steve Johnson wanted to know what bill it was, Janelle. You might text a little bit on, I don't remember the bill number you thought it might be. Well, I thought we decided it was 316. Yeah. Um, and he asked why it didn't go anyplace, and I think I said it was due to the abortion issues, and the KAC didn't want to have too many issues in front of him, so right. he's going to, and I think you will, you know, follow up on it. Uh, that's all I had. Uh, we talked in the regular meeting. There's a couple of people around Chapman that uh, had COVID-19. They're now at home. I guess doing well. Okay. That's all I have, Lynn. Thank you, Ron. And I don't have anything, Lynn. Okay. The only thing I have to report is uh, a couple of days ago, Senator Jerry Moran was here. He did a tour of Great Plains Manufacturing, and they were kind enough to open up their facility to have us take a look. Uh, also, Mayor Chris Osterman was there, and, uh, and some of Senator Moran's staff, and someone from Salina. Um, it, you know, really, we're so fortunate to have a facility like that. They've been good partners, Great Plains Manufacturing. Of course, they have their headquarters in Salina and Asaria. And we're one of their facilities. Um, this was at the West Campus, which is what known as the Alco Warehouse. And you know, we kind of rolled back over how things had gone. That you know, there for a while, Orchland owned the facility and just parked it. Nothing was going on there. Uh, now that Great Plains Manufacturing has it, um, they're looking for some continued expansion. They have space to grow there. Um, they were showing us some of their product line. They're in need of welders. Um, they're, as far as workforce development, I mean, they're, if there's people that are looking for jobs, they have some places for them. But um, it, it, was, it was good to have them there, but also when Senator Moran was there, he asked about other issues, and one of the issues that came up, and I had mentioned it, and I know the city is concerned about it, is as from a tourism standpoint and business standpoint, it, um, it'd be helpful for the Presidential Library and Museum to be open. And he's been in contact with the National Archives and um, is having a conversation with that, and I think that would be helpful and um, e economically beneficial. But, you know, people sometimes travel a long ways to see a facility like that. And I know with things going on as far as COVID, it's a different situation this year, but um, you know we have to look for ways to adapt and ways to try to have things opened up uh, in a safe manner. I did not have anything else. We do not have any petitions or proclamations. Public comments on anything that is not on the agenda could be made at this time. We do not have any public comments. So uh, our county administrator is away today, and Janelle is going to be filling in. So Janelle, if you'd give us your report, please. Good morning. So we purchased diesel fuel at uh, 1.563.
from Robson Oil this week. The highway department's been busy. They'll start chip seal in Solomon today and hope to be done by next Wednesday. They placed, started placing shoulder rock on the new pavement, but unfortunately they're not able to return to the shouldering this week because there's a lack of 83 rock at the quarry. So hopefully in two weeks they'll have more of that and they'll move down to 1700 Avenue. They did some dirt patching in Enterprise. It was just kind of a trade-off of resources, so they let us use their mini excavator and then we went in and did some dirt patching for them, so that was kind of nice. They also completed the first of this year's fish passage projects. That was a, they removed a little water crossing on 800 Avenue between Trail and Union Roads, and then we'll request the funds next week. So that's been a, that's been a really great project resource for us, you know, to repair those bridges. Good news, sales tax numbers are up from last year by over $41,000, which is, which is great. And we kind of touched on this in the study session. I think more people are staying at home and doing projects there, going to the grocery stores and, and that, so that's very good. And uh, Tim's here and he'll review the conditional use permit, so that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Doug, do you have anything for us? I do not, thank you. Okay. At this time I'll go to notices and communications. We have a letter from someone that is um, pointing out that uh, the Fairview Cemetery, they don't feel like the grass is being mowed adequately, and they have sent that to us. I believe that there is some money that is collected that goes back to various cemeteries, and this has to be one that, that they do receive some county funding for that. Um, a lot of times that's just kind of up to the local cemetery boards to decide how often they mow and what their budgets are and I think a lot of times they try to get by on a very meager budget and so when when there is extra moisture like some of the that we had early on I mean sometimes that does happen but um, but, but anyway they hopefully they have also included in this uh, the cemetery board so they would be aware of that I also have a couple of letters that I've received that have to do with um, with visitation as far as as care facilities and I know that there have been restrictions on what people uh, family members as far as going into some of the nursing homes and care facilities and they were just asking that uh, that, that be taken into consideration the well-being of some of the people there because they do depend on personal contact and I think it's very difficult for some of the families and the instance they mentioned is their 90 year old mother had dementia and, and really didn't understand why the family couldn't see her more often and um, I, I believe in our discussion earlier there had been on the radio program a question on that and I believe our health board is reviewing that policy having said that I know they also need to be communicating with what some of the expectation is as far as the care facilities because they are also obviously uh, responsible for the, the health and well-being of the people that are there and so it, it's not a um, it's not an easy yeah, not an easy. I mean, there, there's there's solutions there, and yet there's a lot of factors to take into consideration. Were there any other communications that any of you would have received? Okay, I believe the next item then is that we will go to um, Tim. Do you want to tell us about the conditional use permit that we're considering? <coughs> Okay, this is uh, on August 20th, uh, a public hearing was held by the Dickinson County Planning Commission at which a recommendation to approve by a vote of five to zero, 430 head of swine per KEAG application. Uh, the subject property is located in Wheatland Township on the northeast corner of Barn Road and 700 Avenue. Both staff and the Planning Commission 
are recommending approval of the conditional use permit with the following conditions. Uh, applicant uh, must maintain any required state livestock licensing and abide by all state and or federal guidelines regarding site runoff, waste disposal, and setback of pens from property lines. Staff uh, to coordinate with KDHE on copies of initial documentation showing approval of the site uh, with conformance of application plan with state requirements. Uh, as kind of a background, I wanted to kind of give you all uh, the staff at the request of uh, Planning Commission Chairman Schneider uh, did meet with County Council who did confirm that the proposal would fall under the county definition of a commercial stockyard, but it was determined that, you know, really there's there's really no guidance that give, you know, gives, it sets the line between what a, what a general farm operation would be like versus a commercial livestock operation. And so basically what I did is after consulting with the County Environmental Services, uh, staff has determined that this proposal would ultimately fall under the jurisdiction of the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, which issues licenses for animal confinement uses and has adopted standards for runoff, waste removal, and setbacks from adjoining properties. Therefore, the commission should technically review this application as it would, like let's say communication towers, which are regulated at the federal level. That is, you know, approval on the condition that all state approved paperwork, including the plan and letter stating, uh, stating that the property meets state requirements, be submitted to staff for the county record. Uh, with that, here's the question. The lacoon that's going to be built for the, the hog facility, uh, who determined what size that would be, Kim? That, uh, I, I don't know at this time. I think that that's, that's a, that Derek would know that. He's working with them on But it, that had been determined yet how big the lagoon needs to be? It's, uh, there, it's, uh, I think that he's coordinating with KDHG now okay. on it. And I see then on the, it's not on this map here, but I pulled up on the, here, the lagoon from their house, just to the, to the west of their house. And seven, how far away is that from the well then? That's well the well if I can. can I yeah, we sure can. <clears throat> okay. The well is here. I mean, the well is going to be over here. Okay, so okay, it's out of the way. So it's way out of the way. I, the house I, I here. pointed up there, but like I see here more where the house is going to be on your map here. Yeah. It's kept growing harder. Yeah, and it's 150 foot on the north side away from the fence. Yeah. 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 I think the applicant earlier said it's 1,100 feet the distance from the. Uh, where the, the livestock would be to the to the well. Yeah, it's well out of the way out of that out of that range. Right, it's, yeah. And then he lagoon also, would be. If I'm reading this right. Lagoon would be right in here. Yeah, yeah. And then the well is going to be well over here. Yeah, well over here. Now the lagoon for the house is going to be, be right. Here. Yeah, yeah. It's just to the west of the home. Yeah. And to the west was uh, uphill incline. Yes. So, yeah. so they had factored that in. Mm -hmm. Now the conditions you have here, so this is the, the part that's also important to us, is that you will get the information to KDHE, but also they, when they approve the site, uh, Department of Health and Environment, that it also has to be in conformance with the applicant's plan and also state requirements. Yes. And so, so once that certificate is issued, then he would have copies of that yes. and be subject to inspections from them. Right, and it's my understanding that those inspections, even the, you know, all of those types of operations uh, are subject to inspections, but it just depends on, because he's less than a thousand uh, animal units, he's probably only subject to an inspection every 18 months you know, or so, usually okay. if it's more. There's uh, more than that than it would be like every year or something. So it's like every 18 months to two years. I know this is more of a township issue, but I know I see that letter from I can't think of Wilson or something like that. Yeah. How, which way are they coming out of the property then, Kim? 
they're going to be coming. Uh, the driveway is going to be coming up from here. And this is a gravel road, 73rd Avenue. Yeah, and they're going to gravel all the way from here. Oh, it's not gravel now. It's not right. And it's there. That's what the township's going to do is from here down and over. Ooh, he's going to pretty good stop there. Yeah, I see where he's going to put first base on and stuff like that. Yeah. Are there any other questions or comments? And what we need to do is um, decide whether to have approval on that. The conditional use permit is PC 20-3 for 217 700 Avenue. I make the motion we approve the uh, zoning permit. I'll second it. Okay, we have the motion. We have the second for approval of permit PC 20 3. This is the zoning permit for Brent Boyle, is the applicant 217 700 Avenue. Any other discussion or question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And all this needs then is my signature on behalf of the county. Yes. And then the zoning administrator. Yep. Is there anything else to be brought forward in our meeting? Uh, yes, I'd like to announce that somebody had a birthday today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Barb. Barb. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> what kind of cake are you getting? Oh, yeah. <laughs> marble. Marble. I move we adjourn. I'll second it. Okay. Yeah, it'd be a little hard to sing with mask on. <laughs> You're safe from that. We have the motion and the second for adjournment. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Tim.